everyone, Matt here from the Tech Corner, and today I'm bringing you a review of the Blue Studio X6. And when I did my unboxing of this video, which I will link right here, I said that I am intrigued by low budget phones. Why am I intrigued by low budget phones? Is because I'm always curious to see how the top end phones of yesteryear slowly trickle their way down into these budget devices. And this phone sells for $130, which is a great thing for it. Another great thing about it is it has a big, bright display, it has a decent battery, and everything that you need comes in a package, including a case, charger, headphones, but that's about all that it has going for it. Um, I can't really complain too much about the design. It has this kind of fake leather back, uh, metallic feeling frame, and it doesn't feel bad. I mean, it's $130. I really can't complain about it. Um, now, battery life, I get about four and a half hours, but that's probably because I didn't really want to use it that much, to be honest. Uh, performance really wasn't very good. I would tap an app to open it. I would just keep tapping and pray that it tapped. I didn't know if the screen didn't pick up my touch or if the CPU just decided it didn't want to open the app at that time. So that was kind of bad. Uh, another thing is that I noticed that even on Wi-Fi, and my router is not even five feet over there, uh, it would say, no, I'm sorry, there's no connection right now. It was able to send a Hangout on Wi-Fi it was able to check my email, but YouTube, no. And I don't mean where it would load and have to buffer. I mean, it wouldn't play. It literally would open and say, would you like to go offline? That's not okay uh, for a device. And maybe you're thinking, well, Matt, it runs Android 5.1. Uh, it has things like a mini SIM card slot, not necessarily a nano SIM card slot. And Android 5.1, it must be a phone from, what, two, three years ago? No, it was released in May of 2016. Yeah. So the cameras on this phone, I might as well not even mention. In good lighting conditions, they're not that, it's not that great. It takes a long time to actually turn on. It has no autofocus at all, so you have to pray that it gets something in focus. Any shadows it has, there will be noise. The And that's an 8 megapixel camera. It's not even like I'm telling you that it's a 2, or just a, it, it's just a bad sensor, period. Um, the front 5 megapixel camera, like many phones I've reviewed so far, like to go into a beauty mode. That sucks. It has no detail, and it's just really noisy. If you want this noisy, walk into a room filled with 20 babies and take a big mallet and smash it into a crock pot or just some big type of stock pot or anything of the sort that will make tons of noise, and then just let them cry into microphones that have been plugged into amps that go all the way up to 11. And that's how noisy this camera is. So I can't recommend it for that one. It has no type of quick charging. Uh, and with one gig of RAM, multitasking is nearly impossible. And I've seen phones that perform better than this. I will link my HTC Desire 530, which comes with a Snapdragon 200 bottom end processor. Didn't do as well on benchmarks, but it performed admirably in comparison. And then you also have the Samsung J3, which I'll link here. And that I could recommend over this. Even the pictures that came from its lower resolution cameras were at least better and had autofocus. So are you looking for a phone in the $130 range? You might be able to find them. The two phones I just mentioned go for $100 and then $150 respectively. On the other hand, you could find this. And if you see this in a store, 
just keep walking. Even those other phones, at the last part that I kind of forgot to mention, had 4G LTE. A phone being released in 2016 that doesn't have LTE and is being sold for over $100 with a low resolution 720p display, bad cameras, slow performance. You might as well just save your money. Go ahead, if, if you want to spend clo- you know, anywhere between the 100 to $200 range, I know that's a, a big range for people that are on a tight budget, but go ahead and look at things like the HTC Desire. It wasn't a speed demon, but if you're, if, if you're looking for very small aspects of it, you know, or you're using it as just a daily driver, you don't do a lot of gaming, you don't do a lot of multitasking, you just need it for social media and maybe taking the occasional picture. That would be better. The Samsung J3 had a lot of those perks, but performed better. Had more RAM, it gamed a little bit better. Again, it didn't have the best cameras, but that was pretty much my only caveat with that. Or if you're looking at 130 and you can spring another 50 bucks, I found the Motorola G4 linked here for only $180 when I bought it. And that was so much better of a phone. I mean, not even in the same class, not even comparable. If you're able to go up from there, you can find things like the Honor 8, you know, that's already in the $300 range, so maybe not. Um, but you can find other items like the Motorola G4 Plus that comes with Amazon. So they kick down, a, you know, 50 bucks off of the price. And it actually comes with things like a fingerprint reader, three gigabytes of RAM, a camera that you might want to use, performance that won't make you want to headbutt the phone instead. Um, I'll tell you, I haven't been reviewing phones for too long. Uh, I've only been doing this about a month and a half. But whenever I would review the other phones, no matter how low budget or high budget, I was able to put my Nexus down and say, I'm not going to use this right now. I'm not, I, I, I don't need it. This, I'm going to use my review phone. This phone made me scream for my Nexus and actually need to use my Nexus so many times because it just couldn't even do the basics. So I'm sorry to bring you such a negative review, but I have to give you my unbiased opinion because I would hate to see someone end up with this device and have the same type of issues and anger towards it that I was having. Now with that in mind, if you like this review, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions for me, leave the, a link down below. And of course, subscribe to my channel because it helps me out so much and allows me to keep making videos and it also allows you the viewer to see updates and not get notifications as soon as I release new videos and like I always say this has been Matt here at the Tech Corner thanks for watching everyone I'll see you in the next video bye